Starting in the kitchen, you know, fresh berries. We usually use them in cakes, pies, muffins, all and that good stuff. And here's the thing: sometimes you go out, you go strawberry picking, you go blueberry picking, and you've got mm -hmm. a ton. And by uh, the, by the end of the day, you're sick of making trifle, you're sick of making cake, you're sick, sick of making this. That's a busy day. <laughs> well, maybe over a week or so. You've got those blueberries, raspberries, strawberries. They're on their last legs. So what we're going to do is use them for a dinner here to show us two delicious ways to do so. We have personal chef Bill Collins, ChefBill.com is the website. You're a cookbook author, and today you're a chef. Chicken maker. I am a chicken maker. And pork. And, and pork. pork. But the thing is, those are a very important part of the meal, but the berries are what it's all about today. And today, the first one I'm doing is a chicken and blueberry recipe. And because we're on the cusp of our local blueberries, they should be here any day. And, uh, and they're just so flavorful that usually you think of uh, blueberries as either just eating them by the handful, blueberry pie, cobbler, ice cream, whatever. But to put them in a savory dish, uh, it's a great way to go, especially if you've got tons of berries. So that's what we're doing today. Perfect. And that's a great way to use them and sneak some fruit into your meal with your kids, right? Oh, absolutely. Because so. anytime you can sneak fruit and vegetables into the kids when they're not paying attention, it's a good day. Yeah. <laughs> but I mean, usually kids like the blueberries. So, all right. So we've got our blueberries. This would be great to make when they are right in season, which is around the corner. Right. So you sauteed up some onions to start this. Well, actually, no, I didn't. Oh. Actually, the, the second a part of it, actually, first thing I do is I wanted to brown the chicken, get oh, that okay. done. Mm -hmm. But no, but but I'm getting back to the onions in a moment. Uh, but I just took a, a chicken thigh. Uh, boneless, skinless. Uh, there's no breadcrumbs, no nothing on them, uh, no flour, just a little uh, olive oil in the pan, salt and pepper, and this is uh, what you, I ended up with. Chef uh, Bill, when you buy chicken thighs, sometimes in my experience there's been like a bunch of fatty chunks on the end. Do you pre cut those off or do you let them cook off? I do trim them off. Okay. And so, because uh, otherwise, <clears throat> just fat that's going to end up in your food. Yeah, so, you don't need it. No. no so, yeah. you can skip that part. Yeah, we're always trying to cut down on the fat, right? Absolutely. <coughs> now, the second thing I did is uh, I put some, um, uh, uh, I didn't put the onions in. I went with uh, these instead. I don't know. Shallots? Thank you very much. I was wondering if that was, have you guessed? I, I left one out for slicing. It looks like an onion. It's of the onion family, and it looks like a red onion. But the difference in onions are, uh, is milder than an onion. Uh, it's about uh, that big. looks like uh, the size of a large piece of garlic. But more mm -hmm. to the point, uh, when you caramelize and brown onions, they take longer. These shallots have been here for just a few, uh, I would say about six minutes. Wow. And so it's, it's a lot faster. And I just put a little water in the pan just to it deglaze. You get some of these little stuck bits in off the bottom of the pan. What a good idea. Because what we're doing here is we're building a sauce that's going to go in with the chicken. So all the bits of in the pan from browning the chicken, that flavor is in with the shallots. I've also got here some balsamic vinegar and uh, putting that in. Uh, and you want to put that in once the onions are brown? Exactly, because uh, this is all going to be going into the oven very shortly. So brown the onions. I've cooked those up. <clears throat> and I've also got, I just got a, a lung full of uh, vinegar. Vinegar, when it's cooking, uh, it, it can... Uh, oh, if it goes right into your nose or mouth, you're in trouble. It just did, so, but I can, I can continue speaking. <laughs> yeah, 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 worst case scenario, uh, we can take it from here, <laughs> I think. <laughs> you could jump in. And okay. you put some honey in there? I did put some honey in there. So it's really pretty much two to one, about a half a cup of the, uh, of the balsamic vinegar and uh, the honey. So just stir that around. I'm going to bring it to a simmer, and I've got blueberries here, but also I'm going to put a little bit of rosemary in. Okay. And uh, what I do is uh, uh, go with the dried rosemary. See how it doesn't look like rosemary? What I did was I hijacked my wife's coffee maker and I, I ground it up. Boy, when she found out when she had rosemary coffee one morning, <laughs> yeah. it was quite a surprise. I was say, you were going to be in the doghouse, my friend. Well, I went out and bought her a new coffee grinder. Oh, good. Okay. So, Unless it, it could be the, the next new thing. Uh, it, uh, well, it hasn't caught on. It's certainly not in our household. Okay. <laughs> no. so, so, but the, but the thing about this is uh, it gives up its flavor faster. Instead of just those little needles which you can poke an eye out with, uh, this way it just incorporates in faster. That's true. Now, this has already come to a simmer. And I'm going to put the blueberries in, and I'm just going to bring it to a simmer. I'll let the uh, uh, blueberries cook just a little bit, uh, and they're going to start to burst. I'm going to put them on top of the chicken, and then pop it in the oven for about 10, 12 minutes, or until the chicken's cooked through. Oh, so we're cooking it with the sauce in the oven all together. Exactly. Uh, uh, the, the next recipe would just be just a skillet recipe, but this one is going to finish up in the oven. Uh, I do want to mention that all the great food today, the berries, the chicken, all of it came from our friends at Whole Foods in Hadley, and uh, the berries are just looking terrific, and our local ones will be in and will be there shortly. 
But uh, so this is just going to simmer like this. Now, the whole idea of this of building a sauce, we could have taken the ingredients and thrown them in the pan, have them cook in the oven. This is going to be faster this way because the sauce has already gotten underway. We browned the chicken. The chicken, while it's browned, is not cooked all the way through yet. Mm -hmm. And so it's 10, 15 minutes, whatever it takes in the oven. Because also, uh, just like people, chickens come in different sizes. Sometimes uh, thighs are smaller, sometimes they're larger. And so uh, that's why I say about 10, 12 minutes. It could be a little bit longer. So you want to cook them through to about 165 degrees. Okay. But you just got a lung full of... Uh, well, it's actually head. burning my eyes. I can't, I'm impressed that you keep talking you know, and yeah, you're breathing kid, it in. Yeah, kids, try this at home. <laughs> because <laughs> nope, don't, don't listen to, to Chef Bill here. Well, then, perfect. Why don't we take a quick little break? We'll come back, uh, finish this later when, sure. we, when we don't have to get some... All the some, fumes will be wafted all, all, away. Yeah. All, all the fumes, and, 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 and we'll do that. Okay, good. Yeah, yeah just uh, keep yourself <laughs> safe because we have you on the show too much uh, to get you injured. <laughs> That's right, yeah. Later in the show, we're going to make pork tenderloin with strawberry speed. We're back with personal chef Bill Collins, chefbill.com. We're making pork tenderloin with strawberries, And we're right? cooking up more balsamic vinegar. Oh, so good. just when we thought you were done. You know, because you can't have enough balsamic vinegar cooked. Well, actually, that's a really good point, Ashley, because uh, one of the things, because we're balancing sweet with uh, something else, a little bit of a bite. In this case, I've gone with both balsam vinegar in both dishes, but you can go with uh, uh, cider vinegar in this one or another kind of vinegar, but uh, I think it adds a nice balance of the sweetness and a little bit of honey uh, that go into this dish. So let me review what we've done to get to this part of the sauce. Great. I've already browned off the pork tenderloin. Now, one thing, it might look like little bits of chicken, but what I do is I took a whole tenderloin and I sliced it. The reason is made, made little medallions. Show it off right oh, here. Please do. Look at how pretty this is. And the <laughs> reason I did that is because it cooks that much faster. And uh, so what I do is I browned it in the pan, and just like with the chicken, with the bits that were in the pan, uh, I deglazed it with some chicken stock. I put some garlic in first, and what I'm doing, I just got some more uh, balsamic in Really, you this can't catch a break. I, I think it. I, I'm going to blame the ventilation because <laughs> I, I we, be, yeah, we should have someone in here to look at the, you the know, pipes call OSHA. and the hoods uh, and yeah, everything. Yeah. <laughs> don't don't call. Oh them. no! Don't no no! Don't don't, don't, don't call, call them. No. But uh, so so really though, the first two recipes because earlier in the show we made the chicken thighs. It's very similar leading up to right now. They really are, and and what they they veer off actually in the amount of balsamic and the amount of honey, and the, the other one had rosemary, which gives it uh, a different kind of oomph. And this one has garlic. It's got the strawberries, and it's nice and sweet. But when you finish. It, uh, as we have here. I also put a little feta cheese on there. So again, it's all about a nice balance because you've got very mild meat flavors. Uh, and then you've got uh, the strawberries in this and the blueberries in the other one. So so it really does balance off well. And I see all the fumes are going right towards you, Ashley. I didn't want to so say it, but yeah. But, but uh, you're holding up very well. It. You can. Yeah. You're, you're a professional. She says right now. <laughs> yes. <laughs> now, do you finish this off the same way that we finished uh, the chicken one earlier? Do we finish the whole thing in the oven? Do, no, the whole thing gets on a uh, uh, stovetop here. So you just simmer it until the berries are cooked. It could take a couple of minutes, could take a little bit more. And then uh, you check once the berries are cooked through, uh, and you can tell already they're just about cooked through, uh, check the flavors. Uh, you know, see if it needs a little more salt or pepper, and you're ready to go. And then just serve it. I like to serve it on a dish, just as you see here. Uh, I've got the uh, strawberries. I put some fresh stra sliced strawberries on top, and the other berries. And I want to show you also a couple of little berry techniques here. Ooh. And and also, I want to talk to you a little bit about why uh, these are not local strawberries, because we've been talking all week about how we're going to have these great local strawberries here today. But that's the thing about New England, or it being any farming area. We've had rain the last couple of days, so we haven't been able to pick the strawberries uh, and to get them in. So. We've got the uh, imported strawberries. I've already had, I think, three batches of the strawberries already this year. We've got a great crop of strawberries this year. Yes. But don't wait because they're going to be gone soon enough. That's true. That's easy local. come, easy they're go. They're like candy. Like, it, they're so good. They they're really local. are. They're sweet and they're perfect. So I just wanted to show you a couple That's of things. That's the best things. decision we've made all week. You know, week. I'm just saying, you just put the lid on Maybe the thing and uh, you know, save a few lives. <laughs> So and now I don't even remember. I've used this before. This is called a tomato shark to take the the stem out of it, uh, the end of a tomato. Uh, it works also beautifully with strawberries. You can use a paring knife uh, as you've got there. Mm -hmm. uh, they're little strawberry hullers, uh, but this way it takes out just the part you want without wasting any more. Now, very cool. See and see how much faster it is uh, than with the paring knife. Yeah, much easier. And uh, it works out really, really well. And what I like to do is I actually hold it a little closer to the beginning. <laughs> no, no, you're fine there. 
Look at that. Okay. Boom. Oh, perfect. Wow. Wait, you're a culinary professional. Really proud yeah, of you. Not even close. <laughs> now, now, Seth, let me also show you two other uh, ways you can garnish with strawberries while the, the sauce is simmering there. One of them is just kind of cut the strawberry uh, in half like that, and then just put a little couple cuts in, not all the way up to the end. And then what you can do is you can fan out the strawberry so it makes a nice little oh, presentation cool. like Ooh. that. Or another classic one. Pop e this one. Right. Chef's Secrets. Chef's Secrets. Or keeping the end on the strawberry. Cut it all, but not quite all the way through in half. And then just kind of give it a little twist. And then it just kind of rests like that. Put it on top of an ice cream sundae or on top of the pork dish. Oh, because, you know, it's all about the presentation. It really is. And so this way, especially we've got so many of the great strawberries, uh, that you can both present them. And it's a, an edible garnish. That's all you want. Just don't eat the green part. Oh, okay. Was, but just, we can I, eat the rest, right? Oh, you can eat the whole thing. So uh, even though these aren't the local strawberries, they're really good. I mean, strawberries all over the country are just popping right now. So what we do then, once we have this dish ready. Just smother? Just smother. You can see how quickly, just by putting the lid on, too, that this cooked. So just, I just like to drizzle a little bit over it like that. Oh, this looks great. And it's so easy. You saw how fast it, it was to do it. The browning the, the por uh, pork takes just literally minutes because it's so thin. And uh, you know, uh, it, it took not even five minutes of browning. Could you also put the pork in there and put the lid on it to kind of let the pork like um, get some of the flavors? Oh, or? absolutely. Oh, it, actually, and, and I've done that as well. Yes, you can. And uh, the advantage of that is you do get the flavors. A disadvantage of that, and it's a minor disadvantage, is it loses some of its really nice look because it's really got that nice brown, brown look. Brown, that's true. And, okay. and that's perfectly fine. It, it, it's going to be terrific. So it's really how you want to do it. But okay. Absolutely, you can keep it in there. And if you were to keep it in there continue cooking, I would actually cut thicker slices of it so it won't cook all the way through when you brown it. That's and then idea. when you build your sauce, Put the pork back in. It'll finish cooking, and you'll have all those great flavors. Full of great advice. Full of great recipes. Chef's secrets. Thank you, Chef Bill. Well, thank you for having me. This it's is delightful.